All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us on live stream again. And uh, Emily Romero is going to come sing for us this morning. Amen. Yes. And uh, y'all just bear with us because uh, this is a new song. And if I mess up, Emily, you just keep on going, baby girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sword, y'all. 
Amen. Well, are we glad to be in the house today? Where there's joy. Woo! Glory. All right, swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. <laughs> My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't you believe that today? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm still hearing that I got joy. My goodness, how wonderful. Well, let's see. Do we have it on screen yet? I'm going to get a sip of water while she's getting that ready to get up there. I guess I better get it on mine. I'm over here on somebody else's. <coughs> I got to go be in service. <coughs> you know what? <coughs> I hope y'all are all, all taking advantage of us not having Wednesday night services here so you can go visit and be in service with other people. It's wonderful. Because, you know, I, I, don't, I believe all the walls should be torn down in religion. That's what I believe. I don't believe that God's got a, a little section of heaven for the, the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, the Baptist, Methodist, Church of Christ, Catholic. I, I don't believe that. I believe we're all, as him, we're all one together and that... that um, we learn from each other. Amen. We glean from each other. Amen. And so if you get an opportunity to go visit uh, whenever, you know, go. Go go partake. And, and uh, you know, that's how I come up painting this wall. I went and visited a church and uh, got to, uh, I don't even remember where it was at, like up in northern Arkansas somewhere. And, uh, and I, I sat in there and I looked at that church and I heard this just as clear. You can do your church that way if you want to. And I go, okay, I think I will. And, uh, you know, because me and the Holy Ghost, we talk all the time. <laughs> so if y'all ever see me talking to myself, sometime I have a need to talk to somebody with some intelligence. I'm just saying. All right. What does it say on the screen? Seek and set. Seek and set. It's paid for. It's pay say that out loud. It's paid for. It's paid for. All right, so here we go. We're fixing to go somewhere. Turn to Colossians, that's our first scripture, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to start with verse 6. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, we're going to go down through 15, but we're going to tarry. We're going to spend some time here in this uh, particular passage because uh, I want to, um, as, as the Holy Ghost was uh, was breaking it down to me that's I pray in Jesus name that I'll get it broken down here this morning and so verse 6 and I'm just going to read through the whole thing first and then we're going to go back and dissect is that all right yeah. all right here we go uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Let's all say that out loud. Philosophy, vain deceit, traditions of men, the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Say complete. Which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh 
by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Is this past tense? Am I, re am I the only one here reading that this is already done? That this, this is past tense. That me being dead in my sins, my flesh ruling and reigning, reigning, not circumcised through Christ, Jesus died for me and forgave me of all my sins. Well, that's powerful. Isn't that powerful? I couldn't buy it, earn it. I sure didn't deserve it. But he said, let's do that again. Hath he quickened together, which means make alive, with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Say openly. openly. Triumphing over them in it. Well, this is powerful. This is powerful scripture I'm giving you today. So look, let's, let's all start this before I start breaking it down. So let's all say this together. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Let's do that again. Jesus paid it all. Now, has anybody in the house ever had a time payment plan? You buy a house. Most of us can't afford to pay cash for a house. We go on the time payment plan, don't we? And in the time payment plan, you have hidden, hidden uh, fees. And, uh, you know, you'll start out and they'll say, well, you know, you can buy this house at and we can get you in it, you know, it'll cost you five, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use some round numbers because that's, you know, nowadays, you know how expensive living is. But we'll just say, we'll get you in it for $500. And you're sitting there thinking, yeah, that's in my budget. Yeah, I can make that payment. And then when they get done, well, now this is, you know, we got to include your insurance. Okay, so that's going to be another 100 so now we're up to 600 Well, now, uh, there is, <laughs> and when they get done, there's the bank fees, there's the uh, fees for the uh, this and that and something else. Now that $500 house payment's up to $750, $800. And so now you're looking, oh, my God, I'm going to be struggling to make this house payment. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? Okay, then. But now let me tell you what happened. When Jesus, when this word, this word tells us what Jesus did, did, not going to do, but did it for us. Let's say this again. Jesus paid it all. There's no time payment plan. It's like buying a house and you walking in and Jesus standing there by you saying, uh, step aside, I'm going to pay it all. And that's what he did for us. But see, let me tell you what hinders us in this earth. And we're going to get in the scripture in a minute because the Lord broke it down to me. I'm going to break it down to you. We have hindrances that when Jesus paid it all, we try our best to step in front of Jesus and say, yeah, but I don't deserve it. I've been too bad. I, I was... Somebody offended me. I can't get over it. My heart hurt. You know, we find reasons to prevent Jesus from what he already did. And so here, like a house, stepped in and said, I'm going to pay it all. And we show up at the bank once a month making a payment on something that's already paid. 
And so today, if I can get you to get anything else before you leave this house, you'll stop making payments for something that's already paid. Can we get that today? All right. Now we're going to break this thing down. All right. We're going to go back to verse 6. As you have therefore received, as you have received, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Now let me tell you something. If you'll practice every day, uh, and, and it's very easy and it's very simple. When you get up in the morning and you're getting dressed for your day, if you will on purpose remind yourself that you're in Jesus. Let's all say this out loud so, so we can practice today. We're going to start how our morning's going to start. Today I'm in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. Okay, how long did that take to say that? Seconds? Okay, we're going to practice again because in the morning when you get up. Because if, you, if you're not careful, what you'll do is your day will begin. Because how, how many in the house knows we've got busy lives now? Even when you get retired, your life is busy. Uh, you know, it just keeps going. You got always got something. Somebody needs to be ministered to, or you're going to be driving somebody their medicine, or you're going to, you know, there's stuff to do. Amen? Okay, so in the morning when you get up, you need to practice this. Today, I'm in Jesus, and Jesus is in me. Okay, now then, you just, you just out loud let the enemy know that you're not going to follow his antics that day because you're in Christ today. Do you understand? Okay, so let's practice again. Here we go. I'm in Jesus. I'm in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. And Jesus is in me. Boy, didn't that feel good? Let's do it again. That felt so good. I'm in Jesus. I'm in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. Oh, boy, see, start your day out. Now then, you've got your day started of being spiritual instead of carnal. Boy, that's good. Isn't that good? Because, you know, a lot of time, here we go. We get up, and, and as soon as we get up, somebody's calling, or, or we get distracted, or, 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 or the kids needs this, or, or grandma's on it again, or, you know, come on. You know, we get busy, and we get distracted, and before we know it, uh, half of our day's gone, and we haven't even mentioned his name. Or maybe I'm the only one that's ever happened to. Maybe, maybe I, I'm the only one. But if you've had that ever happen to you, then when you awaken in the morning, you practice this. Awaken. Even if you've got to write it down and then put it on the bathroom mirror or something, just to remind yourself that I'm in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. And it only takes that moment to get your mind changed. Okay? Is that good? Is that good? Okay. So he said, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, walk in him. And so that's what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. Are we ready? Yeah. Rooted. That means established in what your belief is. Listen. Don't be wishy-washy with what you believe. Now what I mean by that. We have a basic doctrine in this church, and for those on live stream, if you're interested to know what our basic doctrine is, just go to our website, and it's listed there. We are Trinity. We believe in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We believe that. We believe Jesus died for the whole world's sins, and he was resurrected on the third day, and he's forever seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. We believe, according to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, that Jesus himself took every sickness and every disease and bore it in our place. He took depression, oppression, anxiety. He took it all. And he, he, it was nailed to the cross. We believe that. And we believe when he was buried down into the bowels of, of the earth, down into the corridors of the abode of the dead. He preached to the dead. He said, I am the Christ. I am the Messiah that you all have been waiting for. And the Bible says that the, the, there were the dead that actually rose out of the ground, believed on him, received him, and they had to go bear him all over again when they died again. That's what we believe. That's our basic doctrine. Now then, 
on that basic doctrine, you will learn the Word of God. You will learn passages that you'll be reading and studying, and all of a sudden, light will come to you. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I didn't realize that I should be doing this or I shouldn't be doing that. I didn't realize it. And, and see, I remember, uh, and I do, I need to share this with you. I, I was sharing with a man, I'm telling you, we had a, a, their little a yard sale thing going on uh, over the weekend and they had to cover that stuff up storms come and the wind the lightning and and all that about three different times then we took towels and dried it all off but i'm telling you right now we had some jesus going on up in the midst of that y'all hear me because let me tell you i believe wherever yet whatever you're doing you need to let your light shine amen amen because we're spiritual beings right Amen. Amen. And and so, um, uh, and I, I'm, I know I'm getting kind of way out there. I need to get reel it back in and get over here on the Word. But what I want to say is what you're rooted in is your basic belief. And don't let anyone or anything get you off of what's your basic belief. Because I'm here to tell you that every doctrine in this world somewhere's got a scripture to base their basic belief. And if you get busy trying to learn every Everybody else's and do like everybody else's, they'll be locking you up out there in that, in, in that center. And so what you do is you learn, you get your basic belief. You don't take it off of a man's belief. Yes. I said you do not take it off of a man's belief. Yes. You take it off of the powerful, spirit-filled word of God. Because I'm, t- I'm telling you that this book is true. And do not read this book. I'm telling you, I didn't have no intention of going there, but I'm just going to go there. But, but you, you do not read this Bible as a has-been. You read this Bible as a living right now is. And when you do, when you read, and, and Jesus walked up and, and the man said, Lord, can you deliver my, my son? And he said, I took him to your disciples, and they couldn't help him. And, uh, and, uh, and Jesus looked at that, at that young man. He wasn't a little kid then. He looked at a young man. He said, well, how long has this been going on? He said, ever since he was a child. It'll throw him in the fire. Thank God the Father was there to save him. Get him out of the fire, he said. It'll throw him, it'll throw him in the water. Tries to drown him. You may tell you what it is. That spirit constantly trying to kill that kid. That spirit trying to come on. But listen here. Jesus publicly, publicly delivered that child. Look here. I'm talking about a living Christ right now. Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone and lay hands on somebody and pray for them? Out there. Come on, saints. You know, we struggle sometimes to lay hands on one another in the house. I'll tell you right now, I, I, I don't know how many I prayed for at that yard sale. I don't even know. Don't care. Because if they start telling me what was wrong with them, I'm going to tell you one thing I said. I'm a praying woman. Would you let me pray for you? Well, they were thrilled to let me pray for them too because when you you facing a heart surgery on Monday, you're facing open heart surgery, you're facing whatever the things you're facing, you know what? You're not so big to want to stay in your little religious boat. You ready to get out of that boat and try to find find somebody to pray for you. Amen. And, uh, and I can tell you this, you know, we had, uh, we, cra- we had prayer for about Loretta's sister this morning. I'm here to tell you, I remember the devil wanted to take her foot off. But Lisa and I were traveling on the way back from Little Rock. We prayed till we knew that we knew they was going to take her foot off that night. And if they didn't that night, they was going to take it off the next morning. And I'm here to tell you, we prayed till we, you know how we prayed? By the Spirit. You pray in tongues. You pray by the Holy Ghost until you know that you know that you know that you know that that thing is done. Amen. Come on, saints. Amen. I'm going to tell you all this. We're a spirit-filled church. Let's act like it. Amen. 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 We prayed till we knew, and I'm here to tell you, they never took her foot off that night nor the next morning. 
Why, none of us is big enough to do that kind of stuff. It takes a God. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that same God, that same God that parted the Red Sea, that same God that sent an angel down into that fiery furnace, that same God that closed the mouths of the lions in the den for Daniel is the same God that you and I are serving today. Let's get him out of that little religious box and let's put him out here where he wants to manifest himself. Amen. Amen. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm excited about Jesus today. And y'all better look out because I'm telling you, I'm visiting, I'm visiting spirit-filled power packing. I got to be in a service the other night that I watched a woman being, being delivered from, from the devil. She was possessed and I'm telling you, I watched, I stood this close to that woman and I was praying by the Spirit while they were praying for her. And let me tell you, I saw her eyes rolling up and her head dropped to the floor. They raised her right back up and kept right on praying. I saw her puking in a bag. I saw it all. But honey, when they got done, let me tell you, that woman's a new woman. She's delivered from all those evil spirits. You say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, you better go read your Bible because the Bible clearly teaches that there's demonic spirits that'll possess you it'll take over you it will control you but it's time for the church to get delivered let's come on saints let's get the church delivered then we can go take deliverance to the world amen glory hallelujah and I'm telling you right now, uh, our, one of our pastors in India, he's on it again wanting us to come and preach. He's, already, he's, he's wanting to set us up a three-day revival and, 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 and. So y'all, I'm, I'm expecting y'all to still be praying about that. Are y'all praying for pastor? Okay. All right then. All right. Let's get back in the word before, before my time runs out. Okay, so verse, uh, verse 7, uh, uh, it, it said, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Did you notice it didn't say in your faith? Yeah. But be established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. With what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And so we're supposed to abound in the faith and, and, and we're abounding in it with thanksgiving. Amen? Amen? Is that what it says? Okay, now hold your hand there because you're going to come right back. But I want you to flip right over to Ephesians. It's just a few pages in front of Colossians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22. It says, Now, Therefore, you're no, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And you know, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. The apostles, the prophets laid the foundation of this glorious gospel. They were willing to be cut asunder. They were willing to be hung upside down, crucified, boiled in oil, all the things that went on that, that came against them. I'm here to tell you, there's no new devil. The same devil came against them. And I can promise you today, he'll use people. He, he doesn't show up with a long tail and a pitchfork. Come on, saints. We got to get smart in this. What did he say? Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are builded together for a habitation. We've got to look at your neighbor and say, say, you are a habitation of God. Look at them. See, you've got to look at one another that way. You know why? You may tell you why we have to practice this. It's because the enemy is real quick to show you all your faults, shortcomings, your errors, your faults, that you don't look like a holy temple. Hmm. But I'm here to tell you, that's what he said. I didn't say this. I'm just your mailman today. In whom you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Now then, 
I am in Christ. Christ is in me. I am a habitation for God. See, that's how you got to look at yourself. Well, I wish I could be like old Brother Spookendack. No, you don't. You want to be like Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, we got to get it. Okay, now flip back to Colossians. I just needed to establish right there that we are a temple. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 8. Now here we go. Beware, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So these are areas that will distract you, move you off of what you believe, that will, that will uh, get you sidetracked instead of being after Christ. So you got you to keep this in mind that every day, look, look here, I don't care if you got so mad that you are out cussing somebody and you say, well, Sister Barbara, Christians don't cuss. Give me a break. I've heard a lot of them cussing. And uh, let me tell you something. If you, if you have, have um, uh, got a habit, you got to break that habit. You do. Am I echoing? Yeah. Okay. You working on me, Jeff? Okay. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, so, but let me tell you, even if you failed, you got mad, you're upset, you're angry, you went out and drove your car fast just to cool down, say this out loud, but I'm still in Christ. I'm not going to lose sight of that. I'm still in Christ. And so, therefore, I belong to him, and he very well knows how to take care of me. That's why I don't have time to judge you. And you don't have time to judge me. Because I'm in him, and he very well, if he can't change me, how in the world do you think you can? Amen? We're getting this, aren't we? Amen. Okay, so the word philosophy, that was the first thing that he listed. And see, I think he listed in the order of, of the strength of that thing. Beware lest any man spoil you. Let's say this out loud. He's talking to the Christians. Say it. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Philosophy. Oh, man. Fond of wise things. A friend or a neighbor. A philosophy. Well, now, Sister Barbara, don't you believe that if God really, if the Holy Ghost was really real in this day and time, don't you believe that everyone would have it? Everyone would be speaking in tongues? That's a philosophy. But does it go along with what the Word says? But see, he's telling you how easy it is to, to get caught up in that stuff. I mean, I'm using the Holy Ghost because, you know, a lot of people don't believe in speaking in tongues, although it's biblical. And so I can use that for an example. Is that all right? Yeah. The Holy Ghost don't mind me using him. So he said, beware lest they spoil you. Spoil means, y'all know what spoil means? Yeah. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. You can have a good pot of beans you've cooked. All oh, those things are so good, but you did forgot to put them in the refrigerator, left them out for a few days. Uh, y'all going to find out what spoiled is. Don't let philosophy spoil you. Are we getting this? Yes. All right. The next one is vain deceit. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and under that, you know, I looked Webster and Greek on that philosophy, and Webster said, the science dealing with the general causes and principles of things. Personal attitude. Can you believe that? Personal attitude. Because, you know, we get so full of ourselves. Come on, saints, you know we do it. We get so full of ourselves. I was telling somebody at that Bible study, I said, yeah. I mean, not the Bible study, at the, at the yard sale. I said, yeah, we get, so, we get so caught up with, you know, well, I'm going to run down here and I'm going to get this done and, and, I, and I'm going to go minister over here and, and, I'm gonna, and we don't have time for Jesus. Y'all know it. Y'all know, you know I'm telling the truth. I don't have time for you, Jesus. I'm sorry. I got to practice piano and, and I've got to sing some songs and, 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 and. 
And Jesus just sitting over her saying, but I want to commune with you. I just want you to come aside with me. I just want you to talk to me a minute. Talk to me about what's going on in your life. Just talk to me. But we get so caught up and so busy. But see, he's teaching us something today. Don't, don't let that happen. Let's say that out loud. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to guard that. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Vain deceit means empty. Vain deceit. Empty, useless words that don't mean diddly squat and you take it for law and gospel. Lord, help us. Help us to keep our ears and eyes in tune. Amen. Amen. Vain deceit after the, after the traditions of men. And I'm not even going I'm. You know what? I'm not going to break that down because you all know what it means. You all know what he's saying. Look here. We're going to start our service at exactly 10 o'clock. I don't care if the Holy Ghost. Nope. Nope, I'm not giving the Holy Ghost any time because we're going to start it in five seconds. We're going to start this thing, and at 12 o'clock noon, we're shutting it down. I don't care if people are getting saved, getting delivered. We're shutting it down. I'm telling you, if, if, if I could ever give you vain deceit, you got it. Amen. Because I can promise you God's not on our schedule. Amen. We got our schedule but I can promise you, the God that I serve, if he wants to keep you here till 2 o'clock this evening, delivering somebody's soul that's on their way to hell, he will do so. Amen. And so, let's don't get off in that deceit. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're getting this. We're getting this, Father. We're getting it. Rudiments are the elements of the world. An undeveloped state, an element as an art or science. The rudiments are the elements of this world, an undeveloped state. And you know what? I could expound right there, but I'm not going to. But I'm going to say these words. Anytime that you and I let what's going on in the realm of weather, Whatever, whatever is around us that will prevent us from doing the work of the Father, from attending church, from being responsible with our families, that we have just now stepped off into what he said, don't let it happen. Do you, know, do you have any idea? This town right here has, uh, I believe, 33,000 people in it. And this is Sunday morning, and I don't want to know how many's not in church today? Out of 33,000 people. I don't want to know. The little things that we allow in this earth to keep us, people, there really is an eternity. Amen. There really is. But we're the ones that's got to continue to remind them. We're the ones... We're the ones that, that you say, yeah, but they don't even believe in God. How are they going to believe in God if you never tell them? How, how are they going to change what they believe? If, you're, if you haven't got God active in your life. See, when I say active, how many, how, recently, how many people have you got to share with you what God has done for you? Oh, yeah, I was, look here, I had emphysema, and I was dying. I had five years to live, and God God healed me. That was in 1997. See, that's just, okay, that's my testimony. Right. Have you got a testimony that you've shared? Oh, yeah, I, was, I flipped a car end over end on a Grand Oregon. It should have killed me. Here I am. Amen. That's what God did. Because I'm telling you that people don't want to hear your law. They don't, they, you can stand there and quote them scripture all day long. And they'll walk away the same way they came unless the Holy Ghost has pricked them. But what they want to hear is, is what's real and what's alive right now. What's going on right now? What's in your life? 
What's God done for you that you've told somebody? That something that happened, something, and maybe it happened 50 years ago. But keep telling it. You know what I love about, I, I love about Paul saying, okay, I was on my way to Damascus. My Lord, how many times is that recorded in the Bible? Because everywhere he went, you know what he'd say? He'd say the same thing over and over again. I was on my way to Damascus, and this bright light came, knocked me off my horse. I was blinded for three days, and I'm telling you, it was God. And it turned my life around. I've been changed ever since. Did you have a change? Did Jesus save you? Have you got a testimony in you? Have you got something to share with somebody? Come on, saints. Let's get the deadness out of our church house and let's get some life back in it and get some excitement about what the Savior has done for us. Amen. That means carrying it outside of these walls. That means telling somebody when they're telling you how bad they feel or how sick they are or what's going on, how depressed they are. Do you have any idea how many people are depressed in this day? Well, you're standing there depressed yourself. Join your hands to somebody and say, I know a Jesus that's alive and he's our deliverer. Let's pray together. Let's pray right now. And watch God move. Can I get an amen in the house? Am I boring y'all? All right, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, I'm almost done. Here we go. Oh, I'm humming again. It's probably the Holy Ghost. Amen. The blotting, that was what stood out to me too. And um, in verse, uh, let's get, get in verse 14. I want y'all to see that. In verse 14, it says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, let me tell you something. I looked up in the original writing, the blotting out, and it said to smear out. And you know, in my heart, I was thinking, man, y'all better be glad I'm not one that's got time to do props and stuff. Because I can tell you, I would have had something up here smearing and wiping this morning and a cross and taking that whole thing and just hammering it to that tree to get it out of the way. Because that's what he said. He said, look, look. He said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and which was contrary to us and took it out of the way and nailed it to his cross. And I'm telling you, when the enemy comes to try to destroy you, you've got to get a visual of Jesus Christ hanging on that cross. And here come, here come anxiety. And it began to get nailed because it was a fleshly thing. It began to be nailed. When heart trouble, when, uh, when uh, anything, any sickness, any disease, any, anything that would come to take something from us, it began to be nailed to that cross cross he blotted it all out and nailed it to the cross and it's paid for once and for all it's paid for all I gotta do is believe it and receive it and call it mine I'm telling you instead of saying oh God my back's killing me let's start saying stuff like I'm healed through Jesus Christ of Nazareth I walk in health I walk above and not beneath I'm the head and not the tail Let's get words out there. Amen. 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 In the blotting out, he said, it, it said in the original writing, to smear out, to erase, to pardon sin, to wipe away. Once and for all, done for us. Well, isn't this powerful? Yes. This is powerful. I love it. <laughs> Verse 15 says, and having spoiled, spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, <laughs> triumphing over them in it. He spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them, triumphing. Now then, you all confessed earlier 
that you're in Christ. It's, it's on live stream, so I got proof now. And you all confessed your, that Christ is in you. But according to this word, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he spoiled them. Remember what I said about being spoiled? Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Today, I'm going to say this to you. Do you want to be that one that's triumphing, openly spoiling the enemy? Then start letting him heal, save, deliver people through you. Because that is an open, public thing. When you say to someone, I'm a praying woman, can I pray with you? And you say, well, Sister Barbara, I don't even know what to pray. That's all right. That's okay. You don't have to have, look here, we don't have some little paragraph or something. Jesus understands your heart without him muttering a word. But I'm here to tell you, pray out loud so that person can hear you praying. And if you don't say nothing but this, dear God, help this person. And by the stripes of Jesus, I claim their healing. Amen. If that's all you said, then let me tell you, put that in the hands of God. God will do the rest. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. 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 So what are we going to do? Listen, turn to, this is our, uh, no, uh, turn to Ephesians 6, 12. Ephesians 6, 12. It's just a few pages in front of Colossians. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we, say we, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our wrestling match is not with with a person. That's what that means. My wrestling match is not with my neighbor, my kids, my whatever, my people I work with. That's not my wrestling match. Now, granted, the enemy will use them. But when I'm wrestling, I can get mad at them if I want to. I can get mad at them for saying what they said and doing what they did. But I'm getting mad at the wrong person. Yeah. Because what you got to keep in mind that 99% of the time, they love you. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want to be, you know. But the enemy's using them. That's who's using them, the enemy. They don't even know the enemy's using them. So my wrestling match is not with that person. Place, person, or thing. But I have, I'm in a wrestling match. And you guys see this today. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Are we in a wrestling match? I just read it. What are we wrestling against? Y'all, y'all need me to read it again? We are in a wrestling match, match against the principalities, against the powers, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. That's, there's, our, there's our wrestling match. But we just read Jesus overcome all the principalities and powers, made an open show of them disgraced them publicly. He made a show of them and now I've got good news for you. You are in Christ and Christ is in you and so all of that stuff can't rule and reign over you anymore when you are in Christ. But it's, listen, just like he paid for all the sins of the world, he paid for every sickness, every disease. He paid for everything. You'll not have any of it if you don't receive it from him. Amen. Amen. There's where the secret is. Well, now, Sister Barbara, the Bible says, yes, it does say. You got to believe on him. You've got to accept him. You've got to receive him. Let him be Lord of your life. Amen. Amen. Because we're in a wrestling match. Are we in a wrestling match? 
You get up and say, you know what, I'm going to tell you this. I bet I could come to every one of you's home and tell you exactly when the enemy's torturing you right here. I could tell you. You know why I can tell you? Because what comes out of your mouth. That's how I would know. Because, see, I know every one of you love Jesus. See, I know that. In this house this morning, I know that every one of you love Jesus and that Jesus loves you. But whatever's coming out of your mouth will dictate how much the enemy is pressing you. Yeah, come on, that's right. That's right. Okay, so then start recognizing. You got you to gotta turn that light inside and start recognizing and say out loud, I'm going to tell you something. You have no idea as your pastor. You have no idea. Jackie don't know how many times a day in my house that I have said out loud, get off of me. You know who I'm talking to? My enemy. You have no right. Get off of me. And you know what? He has to get off of me. I have people say to me, boy, you, I, I, just can't, I just can't believe how healthy you are. I can't believe. How, let me tell you something. Do you think I was just God's? Well, you know, I have got a sign that says I'm his favorite. But, you know, we, we know that <laughs> we know he, all of us is his favorite, right? But, but I'm here to tell you, it's because I learned. Don't let it. Don't let the enemy have control. He'll take you to a wheelchair. He'll take you to your deathbed. He will take. Listen. We've got an enemy that we're in a wrestling match with. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. But get your mind made up. Use that authority that is in you. And when you, that junk starts coming on you, listen here. Walk your house or, or drive your car wherever you're at. Don't be afraid to say out loud, Satan, get off of me. You are on territory that don't belong to you. That's something else I say to him. And I'm here to tell you, that junk has to go. See, he's given us rules and regulations. And let me tell you, though, he also gave us earlier what we do that gets us sidetracked from walking in the fullness of God. Philosophy, vain deceit. Oh, well, it's just another day, another dollar. Come on. So you know what? It's time for the church to come alive again. Yes. Did y'all hear me? Yes. Come alive again. Because we're the church. Amen. If we are floating down the old river of Hoham, how do we think that God can manifest himself in this earth if the church is laying asleep in the boat? Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, y'all stand and we'll give you your last scripture. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 says if if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affections which means your mind Set your mind on things above, not on the things on the earth. We live in this world. We live in this earth. And none of us is trying to get out of here, are we? Come on. <laughs> we, we, we like living, don't we? But he's given us simple instructions today. But don't set your mind on this. Set your mind on Christ. Amen. So, as we started this message today, every morning, say out loud. What are we going to say out loud? I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me. Let's do that again. I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me. One more time. I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me. There we go. There we go. And this church is coming alive. We're coming out. We're going to manifest. We're going to let God be God. Amen. 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 Let's praise him just for a minute before I let you go. 
Father, we just thank you for this word today. We praise you, Lord, that let it bloom and blossom in us, Lord, and come forth. I thank you for all those uh, that we prayed for between services, Lord. I thank you for healing and health and restoration and restoring for all of them. I thank you, Lord. I just want to praise you for bringing uh, to, to the fullness of your manifesting to us. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost that's yes. been in the house today. Just want to thank you for that. Father, I ask you if there's anyone in this, uh, in this house or in the live stream that they don't know yes. that they know that if they stop breathing today that they are ready to spend eternity with you. Lord, I ask you to prick their hearts, unstop their ears, open their eyes that they can see and hear this glorious gospel and be saved. Yes. And Lord, those that uh, that uh, that our church out of our church have ministered out at the prison, uh, Brother Jackie and Brother John, and and all of those that have added to recently, Lord, um, I ask you that those in that prison ministry that they will come forth. They'll not be lured back in like your word has taught us. That they'll not be sidetracked, but keep their minds and their emotions on you, Jesus. And we just give you that honor and praise today. Yes. And we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to... I've been fighting with this thing all day. Uh, Emmy, are we still live stream? You Did you cut us off? Yeah. Yep, okay, so right now we're going to...